Hi, Magnify. I'm Courtney Spencer, and I am so excited to be joining you in the hosting chair today. Yes, I am a new voice at the podcast here, but happy to join you in this community. Here's a few things to get to know me. I am passionate about trying new things, and I am a wife, a mom, a national TV host, and an entrepreneur. And I actually joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 2015 as a YSA in New York City. So it's a privilege to step forward and bring you a great conversation today. So let's just jump in. You're going to love what we're talking about because it is a reminder that those things that you're going through that often feel so heavy might just mean you're on the brink of something wonderful. That good things are around the corner and it's a message not to give up. So we're confident about this promise because of a scripture in James 1-2 to count it all for joy. And it's a topic that's been on today's guest's mind, and that is Miss Tammy Uzelek Hall. She's joining us on this episode. Hi, Tammy. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm good. I've been so excited to meet you, though, because um, I think something else you didn't tell anybody is that you do something really unique that has to do with Olympics, don't you? Or you try? <laughs> I, I did the skeleton, the Winter Olympic sports skeleton, where you go face first down the bobsled track by like 80, 90 miles per hour. <laughs> I mean, honestly, isn't there a meme that says that that sport was probably based on a dare or something that got out of hand real fast? <laughs> like, or just pure not doing the things you should be doing in life, maybe? <laughs> Like, this doesn't look like a good idea, but we're going to do it. I mean, that is so impressive. I think that is awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. Yep, I was recruited to do it. I'm Nigerian and from Texas, so winter exactly is not my thing. But when I say try new things, I'm dead serious. (laughs) Yeah, you absolutely are. That's why I wanted to make sure everyone understood what that meant. She really does try new (laughs) things. That is so cool. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be fun. I'm excited to discuss this word with you today. Yes. I think that with your background, which I'm just going to share with those of you who are listening. So Tammy is the host of Deseret Books Sunday on Monday podcast, where she leads a come follow me study. She is a mom, a wife, a teacher, and a lover of cheese. Interesting. Oh gosh. (laughs) I love, I love cheese except for goat cheese. I mean, come on. Seriously. Oh, I know my best friend loves it, but like I said to someone the other day, anything you can melt on chips is your jam. I'm all in. Love <laughs> cheese. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm sure there's a lot of you listening who are like, thank you. I understand, Tammy. <laughs> I think cheese is God's way of saying, hey, everything's going to be okay. Just, all right. <laughs> I will remember that now when I'm like making my yeah. charcuterie board. <laughs> Please. I have it on a pillow. That's how dedicated I am to that saying. So. Oh, dedication truly here to what we love. <laughs> Speaking of what we love, You actually started talking about this summer of joy on your podcast. And I just wanted to understand a little bit more. What was the scripture, this James 1, 2? Why did that catch your attention? What did it mean to you? Oh, gosh, that is a great question. Well, originally, so we all know the classic James 1, 5, which is the scripture that Joseph Smith caused him to go into and ask God about if he could be forgiven of his sins and which church to join, which says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But unfortunately, we often skip the verses ahead of that. And if you read James chapter 1, verse 2, 3, and 4, 5 just explodes. It is so awesome because here you have James 1, 2 that says, Count it all joy when you find yourself among trials and tribulations, which nobody wants to do. I don't want to be happy when times are hard. Yeah. But the beauty of this whole of these verses is when you're in the midst of the yuck, when life is really hard and you're just, ugh. Here's the scripture saying, count it joy. And then the next verse says, and you know what? You're going to learn patience from all of this. But then if you have questions, if you want to know the why or you need help, then come to me and ask and abradeth not, and I will give liberally unto you. That's what that verse is now in in James chapter one, verse five. If any of you lack wisdom about what you're going through, I will help you. Because you're all going to have trials and tribulations. There's not a single human being born that won't experience heartache and sorrow. And from that can come joy 
and come patience and the knowledge that God really does hear and answer your prayers. And so we decided this summer to just count it all joy, and we are going to find all the ways that we find joy when we're in the thick of trials and tribulations. And it's been a really fun experience, and actually, I'll be honest, really hard. I've had a lot of trials. I almost wonder if I brought that upon myself because <laughs> like, I don't want to count it joy right now. What I'm going through oh, is really yes. hard. In fact, I'm thinking maybe next summer we'll have the have a summer be um, count it wealth. How to handle life when you're flush with cash, you know? <laughs> right. Of, or be careful. Maybe it's the opposite of what you ask for. So maybe say, what right, would you like right, to right. not have wealth? And then- <laughs> totally. But be careful about what my summer is next year. But it's been really neat because people have shared. There's one listener who actually on her Instagram account every week post something about what she counted joy that week. And um, it's been neat oh. to just have listeners express how they're counting it joy, as well as our guests. I ask at the end, end of every episode, how do you count it joy? And every answer has been different. So I really think it's cool. So joy, obviously, is ever unfolding, ever expanding. There's just so yeah. many different facets of it. So Absolutely. when when we talked about a little bit about wise men moments, that was mm-hmm. this coined term <laughs> that you brought to us. <laughs> Tell us what that means, what the wise man part is, and then how you transitioned that into something that's kind of a motivating factor for you. Yes. Okay. There are a lot of scriptures about joy, so, so many, and you can go and look them up and find peace and comfort with these awesome verses of joy. But the one that really has stood out to me recently is in Matthew chapter two, and it's in verse 20, or sorry, verse 10, Matthew chapter two, verse 10. This is the story of the wise men. And they come to Herod, and they're having this experience with him. They're saying, where's Christ? And he doesn't know what they're talking about. And then you get to verse 10 that says about the wise men, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And I love this verse because when you think about a time in your life when you have rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, for me, it, before it came trial before it came a wrestle or a struggle. And I Mm -hmm. think about the wise men. Why did they rejoice with exceedingly great joy? Was it because they finally saw the star? Was it because everything was as they they were told it would be from scriptures? Was it because they had spent several years trying to find the star of this whole experience, which is Jesus Christ. I mean, think about these men. These, And we're not really sure. It's kind of a fun study if you want to read about the wise men. We're not sure if it really was three. We assume it was because of the three gifts. But mm-hmm. scholars actually believe there may have been way more than three wise men that came. Oh, interesting. And that it would have taken at least three years for them to travel by foot from where they came from, which was the east. And so they traveling, they're traveling, and the whole time they're traveling, it's on this idea of, whew, you know, I really hope this works. Like, I really hope. Three years of it, potentially, yeah. like you said. I, and and just not knowing. There's that hope that we don't know. We're just going based on what prophets and apostles have written in scripture, and this better work out. And that's what I would be thinking. I will be so angry because this has been a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't like hiking. And so when you think about how much energy they put in to following this prophecy that mm-hmm. they weren't really sure was going to work out, and there it is. They see the star, and of course they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy because it was just as they were told it would be. And I think of our own life. It is a perfect parallel. I mean, every one of us here are traversing for years and years And we're Mm -hmm. just really hoping it's going to be what we think it's going to be. In fact, one of my favorite moments, one of my very best friends in the world, when her father was dying, some of the last words he said to his family was, as he was leaving this life, I just hope it's exactly what I've always thought it would be and that the church is true. And it just made me sob because I think we're all living on that hope. Like we are doing our best. And I just think when we go into the next life, we will rejoice with exceedingly great joy. But I don't think we have to wait till the next life. I think there's times in our lives now where we have moments when we can rejoice with exceedingly great joy because it is true or God did hear my prayer. It worked out this idea in our life when we can rejoice with exceedingly great joy I think everybody has their own. In fact, now I know a little bit about your story, Courtney. I'm just curious to know, joining the church, like, was Mm -hmm. there a moment where you rejoiced with exceedingly great joy? I want to know your story. Oh, well, that is, it's a great 
story. I love the story because it obviously brought me closer to my heavenly father and Jesus Christ and the true church of Jesus Christ. But I will say right before my exceedingly great joy, so right before I decided to even read the Book of Mormon, mm-hmm. there was probably the darkest moment of my life. I was on the Upper East Side. I was outside in the dark by one street lamp. And I had just realized that everything I had grown up to believe, I didn't necessarily believe. Because I grew up Lutheran. I went to a Lutheran private school. Then I went to Baylor University in Waco. So I was in a Baptist university. And then I moved to New York. And so I always knew who Jesus Christ was. I always knew who my Savior was and what he had done for me and for everyone else, and that he died and rose again so that I could be able to be saved. And I just, that was the only thing I knew. Which the beauty of that was, that was enough. That was that mustard seed, right? Yeah. And I just remember sobbing, thinking, I don't know what's true anymore. Like, I can't rest on what my parents told me. I can't rest on what my teachers and Sunday school lessons were taught to me. I had to go figure it out for myself. And so that's when I hit my knees and I said, look, I do believe in you. And I know you will guide me. I know you love me. I need you to tell me what to do next. And I had just been introduced to the church like a couple of months before. I had never heard of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I had never really? heard of the Book of Mormon. Not at all. And I was in my mid-20s. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Nothing. Yes. And okay. so, and then the ironic part is I had never seen a temple, but I drove by the Houston temple every day to get to work. Oh my gosh. But I didn't see it. So I really yeah. do believe that you can have blinders on to, to good, to joy, to truth. Mm -hmm. And not because of a choice. Honestly, I think you just have them because I think Heavenly Father in my situation was like, I need you to go through certain things so that your heart would be softened and that you would be ready to receive the truth and grab it because I need you to hold on to it because I'm the only member in my whole family. And that's like another story. But I just feel like that was for my big joy was then I decided to read the Book of Mormon and I watched my life change. And so for me, that was my wise men moment. I was seeking and seeking and seeking, not knowing what though. I didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew this wasn't working. I knew that I was having hardship after hardship and I was, I was praying, but I, I didn't have the fullness and it really is a difference. And so that's why I am just so grateful for the book of Mormon, because that is literally what changed my perspective, Mm -hmm. my way of thinking, my actual behavior. I mean, I'm not a grumpy person, but in New York, (laughs) I would not. like smile. I would look down. I would like avoid people. And I would just be like, get to work, get to work, get to work. And I started reading the Book of Mormon and no joke. I was like, good morning. How are you? Like, how can I help you? Are you lost? And I was like, what is wrong with me? And the only thing that changed was I was reading the Book of Mormon and I had just felt this joy. I wanted my parents to know it. I ended up like apologizing to them. And they're like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I just want you to know that I want a different relationship with you. I want a different communication with you. And mm-hmm. it was because I wanted a different communication with my heavenly father. And that was what I was learning to do. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely understand the wise men moment. And I, I do think what I was hearing from you was that doubt. Sometimes we think doubt is so negative mm-hmm. and it's actually okay because the doubt can lead to the questions that can lead to your knees that can lead to you looking up. It's just a matter of what you do with it. I guess that could be different consequences. What do you think about that? Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely right. Well, and in fact, as you were talking and we're experiencing this idea of doubt, I was thinking of the scripture in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 25, like Mm -hmm. classic seminary. Mm -hmm. I used to teach seminary and institute, and everybody could memorize this scripture mastery because it's one line. And it's the one that says, Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. I think this verse applies to everything you just talked about, especially your life story, because when it talks about men are that they might have joy, that word might has really struck me this summer because it implies action. It implies on our Mm. part, like you, Heavenly Father's like, you can have joy. Men are that they might have joy. So what are you going to do about it? And I look at your experience like you might have had joy if you... Or, and you, well, you did have joy, but in that very moment, you might not have had joy if you hadn't mm-hmm. followed the promptings to pray and ask. And I think about how many times in my life I might not have had joy or I might have had joy just based solely on my decision. And so it really is about our agency. It's all about you deciding, do you want the joy? And when you're in the thick and then the trial and the yuck of it, you have a decision to make. Who are you going to turn to? You can turn to God 
and it will end in joy, or you can just turn. And sometimes in my life, I have turned away because I've been angry. I've been mad. I didn't get accepted to the graduate school I wanted to after I graduated from my bachelor's degree. And I, so I punished God. <laughs> and I, I said, I am not praying anymore. He does not hear and answer my prayers. It's the one thing I wanted. And I was so angry that I actually ended up taking a trip to Europe with a friend and I moved to Arizona and lived in her house with her family because I said, fine, if God doesn't care about me, then I care about me. And we did this. Mm-hmm. I spent all my money to backpack through Europe for two weeks. I was on a boat in the middle of the night traveling in Greece because we had to get the cheapest ticket possible. And I'm <laughs> on this boat praying. And that's the first time I had prayed in a really long time. And I'm like, what am I doing mm-hmm. with my life? Because my plan was to come back from Europe, live with my friend in Arizona and be a waitress in her dad's Mexican restaurant. That was okay. my life plan. Not a bad life plan for people who like it to It involved serve. queso. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> queso and <laughs> chips. But I knew, I'm like, I'm not going to be a, a server forever. Right. And I just remember that moment on that boat where I turned my heart to God and just said, what am I doing with my life? And immediately the spirit was, here's what you need to do with very clear instructions. And it changed the course mm-hmm. of my life forever. And so in that moment... I might have had joy. I might have not had joy. But I think turning to the Lord gives us that might have joy. I did indeed have so much joy. And I'm grateful that we're allowed to have those moments. He, he lets us have tantrums, you bet. Oh, and yeah. then if we follow him, we, we're going to have the joy. <laughs> and the tantrums, you're just like, why in the world did I go there? But I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Completely. But it's okay. You could, there's still yeah. joy to be had. <laughs> there is. So, okay, joy. I'm starting to understand a little bit more of, but what is the difference between happiness and joy? And, you know, you hear sometimes that happiness is fleeting and I know that, you know, we we might not have the exact answer in this moment. And I think that we do have the opportunity to pray about it and discern for ourselves, which is the best part of personal revelation. Mm -hmm. But for you, from all of your study on joy, could you just give us a little bit of an idea of what the difference is for between happiness and joy? So the, the, I, I love that you just asked this question because oftentimes we can just conflate the two to be the same word. Mm-hmm. Of course, I have to take a Hebrew approach because I've been studying Hebrew for the past eight years, and I love the Old Testament. It's my favorite book. And the word joy in Hebrew is simha. And this word is, it is so cool because if you look up this word, here's how it's going to be defined. It's defined as joy, gladness, exceeding joy pleasure, to rejoice, rejoicing. Like it cause, It's all these verbs. It's mm-hmm. all these action words of what you're doing when you're super duper happy. But then if you read all the places that it's used in scriptures, it's almost universally rooted in Christ. And so mm. I think it's so beautiful that the Savior is the source of all joy in our lives. And when you say happiness is fleeting, I agree. I've had plenty of happy moments that have been great. And then I just kind of forget about them. But my true moments of joy are marked on my heart forever. And I think those moments of joy have been around or have involved the Savior. It hasn't always been like church moments, but I just think of times, well, you know, here's a great moment that I shared recently with a friend. I went to a baseball game with all of my family back in June. And uh, Courtney, just a little bit about me. I married a widower And he had two kids when I married into the family. So I became instant mom to a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. And then we added two more to the equation. So we have four daughters. And it was hard. Like being a mom, way harder than I thought. I was not prepared for how hard it was. Is that what I'm (laughs) thinking? Right? Are you that way? You're like, what? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Still learning for sure. (laughs) I know. I always laugh at myself because I remember being single and seeing mom struggle. And I would think, oh, she just needs love and logic classes, consequences and choices. (laughs) That doesn't work. If only only it was that simple, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. I wish I could consequence and choice my life out of all my kids' situations, but it doesn't work. So it was hard being a mom, and I was really, really struggling. Plus, I gave up my whole career of seminary and institute teaching. I had to be mm. I, my identity. What am I doing? I, lo- I sold my home. I left my ward. No longer hanging out with my girlfriends every night whenever I wanted to. Like, I am a mom now. And I remember someone saying to me, it's okay. It's okay. The good moments will outweigh the bad. Well, I got news for you. They didn't. Because I was going to say, it depends on how, I don't know. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm like, they better be pretty good, good moments, right? <laughs> you have great mom, beautiful moments, but yeah, those hard ones are hard. They are hard. So hard. And so I just have always thought I was a bad mom because I wasn't having enough good moments to outweigh the bad. It was hard. So fast forward 18 years. That's how long we've been married. And we took our whole family to a baseball game two months ago. And here we all are sitting on a row together. They're doing the national anthem. We're standing. I'm, I got my hand on my heart. Everybody has their food that they want to eat. And I just looked down at this row and I started sobbing because I thought this is the good that truly has oh. outweighed the bad. Like, look at my family. They're all adults now. The ages are 28, 26, 17, and 15. We all like each other. Nobody's fighting. Oh. Nobody's really? asked me to take them to the bathroom, and they're not going to. Everyone can take themselves to the bathroom. <laughs> and, Courtney, here's the best part. Everybody can go buy themselves their own food whenever they oh, want. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. I don't have to like feed them their nachos and clean them up. And then five minutes later say, can I go get Dippin' Dots? Like, mm -hmm. great, get it. I don't care what you do. And it just was this moment of absolute joy. And I was sobbing because I thought, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is so great. Look at God answering my prayers in a way I never thought would be answered. I always thought I'd be single or actually, I thought I was going to get married, you know, at 18 and put my husband through medical school while I raised 12 kids. That's, wow. I always thought. Um, and here we are, just my life did not turn out like I thought it would. It turned out so much better. And just this tattoo on my heart of joy, like, okay, this is good. I was happy, but I was filled with so much joy. And again, going back to the wise men, I have been traversing for 18 years <laughs> to get to this moment. <laughs> I'm going to remember that, I 18, had, 18. <laughs> I had a lot of mountains to get here, but you know, oh, anyway, man. that's that's my thought about happiness versus joy. I think it really is rooted in Christ. I, I really appreciate that answer because I, I agree with you. I think that is really the true differentiator between joy and happiness. You can be happy you know, sadly to say, without Christ. It is, it is possible. You can go have a yeah. happy moment. Oh, yeah. But joy, it does come with him, with the Prince of Peace and all of those wonderful mm -hmm. descriptors of his name. I think that is, is 100% true. And when you just said, I didn't know what my family was going to look like necessarily, that also comes with some anxiety, right? Not knowing oh, what it's going yeah. to be. You're like, okay, but what if I really want this and it just doesn't work? I mean, to give a quick example, I trained for seven years for the Olympics and then trials come and COVID hits and I'm sitting there going, okay, Lord, okay, I can endure through this, right? I can do this. Mm -hmm. And I get pregnant with my daughter and oh. I'm sorry, but you're not going down a skeleton sled with a bump on your tummy. Like it's just not happening. No. And so no. all of a sudden I had to shift my mindset from seven years of training and focusing to then say, how is there joy in this? But then to realize the true joy, which is my eternal family, was just to have the best gold medal there ever was, which is my daughter, who's awesome. Right. right. And, and I just think, why did I have to go through that? And I asked him and the joy came because I asked him and he showed me, I needed you to learn something that you could only learn through this journey, this very specific journey. For me personally, I had a lot of hurt, family hurt, relationship hurt like personal trauma that I was having to deal with. And skeleton, going 80, 90 miles per hour down something on an icy chute and banging into the wall is very painful. <laughs> and my coach would say, embrace the hit, embrace the hit. And I finally was like, dude, I have embraced this stinking hit so many times. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and he said, when you're going down the ice chute and you're about to hit the wall, because you will. And I was like, okay, fact. If you lean into it, embrace it, you will get off on a straighter path forward. But if you deflect and you stall and you say, no, 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 you will hold yourself on the wall longer and then you will ping pong down the ice and it will hurt way more. And I said, well, that is a life lesson. <laughs> if no I've never heard one. <laughs> I'm like, right now, mate, copious notes, embrace the hit. Wow. Wow. Yes. So that is, that became my, so I started writing a book on it. Like that is my mantra. It's like embrace the hit because right. I feel like if you do it with Christ, you will be put out on a straighter path. It will be better than you thought. You will endure it quicker and quicker is a different time. The Lord's timing we know is not the same <laughs> as ours. 
And so I, I really think I needed to learn that lesson. And the best way was through skeleton. I learned that I avoided family, you know, conversations. I avoided, uh, oh, I don't like conflict or I don't want to deal with it. And I would try to go around things. But the thing was, is I needed to go through them to learn them. I mean, that is the coolest thing I have heard in such a long time. Because I am just picturing me, how many times I have ping ponged through life because I was unwilling <laughs> to embrace the hit. And embracing the hit ultimately led to, it will lead to more joy. It just leads to joy. It does. It yeah. really does. And, and even in the hardest time. So I want to get back to just one more root point because we're promised joy. So we know that in the scriptures in Second Nephi, you even mentioned in Second Nephi a minute ago, but men are that they might have joy. So what do we do if I'm listening? What is my first step? What would you from your learning say the first step someone should take after listening to this and understanding I want to have that joy, but I am in the stuck. I am in a hardship. I am buried right now. Yeah. What would you what would you advise? Um I would say full circle go back to James chapter 1 verse 5. Because verse 2 is again count it all joy when you fall into trials and temptations. Verse 3, knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And every one of us listening knows that. And and how cool in verse four, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, ask God and he will give to all men liberally. I love the word liberally because it actually in Greek translates as generously. He will give to Mm. all men generously and upbraideth. Upbraideth means he will find no fault in you. So if you're worried about going to him and he's going to be like, well, you haven't repented yet. So as Mm -hmm. soon as you do, and he's stomping his foot and he's tapping his watch saying, okay, come back when you're ready. That, that, what I, that just get that right out of your mind because right here, a braid, if not, or finding no fault in you, it will be given you. And so the first step I think, and is just to ask, to get on your knees and ask God for help. Ask where you need to be. Ask where you're going to end up. He knows. He absolutely knows where it is that you should be. And I think that absolute humility saying, okay, help me out. And what do I need to do is that's, that's how it's always worked for me. And in fact, verse six then says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. I just think of your ping pong thing, Mm -hmm. like take the hit, take the hit, learn from the Lord, ask him. And he, he just really will give generously and he will not find any fault in you. And that is, oof, we need that reminder. It's okay. Go to the Lord. He'll help strengthen you. He is. Trials are going to bring you joy. I love, I love mm-hmm. that message that you're bringing us. And just that you're on the brink of something wonderful, right? Are there any last yeah. words that you would share with those who are listening? I think you just perfectly summed it up, that you're on the brink of something wonderful. If life is really hard for you right now, and you're going through trials and tribulations, take it to the Lord and know that you are on the brink of something wonderful. Joy cometh in the morning. That's a great scripture too in Proverbs, that joy cometh in the morning. It just does. Mm -hmm. It really does. After a hard night, it will get better. It really will. It will. I agree with you. Well, thank you so much for us to understand about Wiseman moments and count it for joy. And I can't wait to see you and the others in all these five different cities. So everyone, please come. Oh, yeah. This is so exciting. Yes. So we're we're going to these five cities for the Lift Up Your Heart tour. And we're talking about those miracles, faith, joy, courage. I mean, all of those so that you can come and feel uplifted and edified and also come with questions and your doubts because guess what? The Holy Ghost is going to be roaming through there, touching hearts left and right. I can feel it. (laughs) Come and see us. We're going to have so much fun. I mean, you are so wonderful. Oh, you're great. So So much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And hey, you heard Courtney and Tammy talk about lift up your heart at the end of this episode. And guess what? We've got good news for you. If you're a Magnify podcast listener, you get a special discount for these lift up your heart events. So head to our website at magnifythegood.com slash events. And when you go to checkout, enter the code podcast 10. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T-1-0. Enter it at checkout and you'll get $10 off per registration, which, hey, when you're at the events, girl math, let's use that toward going to lunch with our friends. This is a perfect event for you if you're feeling like you need to reconnect with Christ, enjoy the company of women who are like-minded, 
and be uplifted by inspiring messages, conversation, and music. I personally can't wait to see you there. It's going to be so much fun. As a reminder, Lift Up Your Heart is coming this fall to Plano, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Idaho Falls, Idaho, and St. George and Salt Lake City, Utah. Go to our website for all the details and don't forget to check us out at Magnify Community on Instagram. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you have a great week.